In this episode of the Beta Podcast, I interview D Mummy, the founder of Mint on Demand, a grooming and well-being service exclusively for men. From luxury fashion to chefing on super yachts, Dee's current focus is now building a brand that empowers males to focus on their own well-being. Mint On Demand has built out their website and application to create an on-demand service for facial, hair, massage, shaving, and many more male grooming services. We talk about Dee's background, how she took the leap to start Mint On Demand, and the lessons along the way. I hope you enjoy. Um, hello and welcome back to the Beta Podcast. Today I am joined by Dee and Dee and I met a couple of years ago when I was uh, interning at Fanbytes and I believe, was it at the um, App Promotion Summit, was it an event? It was, yes. Yeah, and um, yeah, we, managed, we we got speaking and obviously I, I started to understand a bit more about, about who you were and, and your journey and, and how you started Mint. Um, and may- maybe you just want to start there as introduce yourself, give us a quick 30 seconds about who you are uh, and, and what Mint On Demand is. Sure. Um, I'm Dee Mommy, so I'm the founder of Mint On Demand. We started in July 2017. So we started developing an on-demand, essentially male grooming app. So we have an app that runs on iOS. Um, our users can download the app. They can book mobile barbers, mobile beauticians. So somebody effectively comes to them to carry out haircuts, shaves, massages, all that kind of thing. So they can book that treatment to their home, their office, their hotel, and currently we're operating in London. So that was the beginning of Mint Buzz. Awesome. And when when we first met, at what stage was Mint at? Like how long had you been working on the uh, on the idea? I'm trying to remember now, I think. Because that was about two years ago. So it was very, very early days. So it was actually only a year, I think, into into development. That's crazy. Well, awesome. Let's let's maybe talk about go back before we go into kind of where Mint is now. Let, let's talk about um, kind of your story before Mint and how you got to this point. So, what what were you doing before you started uh, the company? Because if if I remember, it's quite a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's a bit of a mishmash, actually. But I found the things that I did before really helped me now. So I immediately before I started Mint, I was working as a private chef, which I actually still do because I love it. So I left London at the height of the recession. So in 2009, I just packed up, left, ended up working on yachts, um, retrained as a chef. And that's, that's basically what I'd been doing for eight years full time. So traveling the world, <laughs> cooking for lots of really cool people. Um, And then I had the idea for my app and that's what brought me back to London. Um, And for eight years before that, I was working in the fashion industry in London. So I started that, that's what I'd studied at uni. Mm -hmm. Did that for eight years, was a freelancer, but then obviously the recession hit and it was time for plan B to go travel, go do something completely different. Yeah, because that's such a massive massive shift from (laughs) <laughs> fashion to, to going into being a full-time chef how, do, how did you find that transition and, and was it more so just that need to want want to go travel and see the world a bit more with with being a chef I think I was yeah I think I was looking for an opportunity where because I'd lived in London I, I really loved it but I thought to myself now's my chance if I want to go and travel and do something else now's my chance um, I was very lucky that I actually heard about it through a friend so she had a friend that was doing it introduced me to the opportunity. I did a bit of research and that's how it all kicked off. So it was literally one person saying one thing to me and it just completely changed my life. And who was that Who was that person? She was one of my old flatmates actually. So completely unrelated industry, one of my old flatmates that was then living around the corner from me once I'd moved out. Um, and we were just having a conversation in passing. And I said, I'm looking to do something different. I kind of feel like, you know, things aren't going great here maybe I should go and do something else. Maybe it's my chance to travel. And then she said, well, if you want to do that and you want to make a decent living at the same time, maybe you should consider this. And that's, that was the beginning of that. Nice. And so let, let's fast forward a bit then to kind of the ideation and the creation of Mint. What was your kind of first steps into, into getting it rolling? Um, well, I think 
I'd always had an interest in well-being, beauty stuff, obviously. I was kind of trained a little bit in various different areas of that. Um, and it was it's really strange because we were working a really, really heavy charter season. And the one thing I used to go and do to treat myself if we had a day off was get off the boat, get out of work, go have a massage, go chill in a spa. And we had such a hectic season this last season that I ended up working full time. Um, I thought if, you know, if I want to do that, my only way of getting this is if somebody comes to me on, on this vessel that I'm working on. And that's what sparked the idea for the app was the whole, you know, people who have busy lives, they don't really have the time. Sometimes it is a bit of an effort. You know, you don't want to go have a massage and then get on a tube and schlep all the way home. So that's, that's what sparked that idea and, and so how did you how, how did you come up with the kind of niche for male grooming particularly i did a little bit of research into into what was going on obviously living living on a boat traveling the world you are very far removed from what's going on in london you know even in the uk as a whole it's you just kind of see stuff on social media and that's it you're really out of touch with exactly what's happening and so I did a bit of research and I thought, oh, this is a great idea. And then obviously I saw lots of other people were doing it. Um, so I thought, well, I, I don't want to do the obvious thing by making it the cheapest because where's the creativity and the fun in that? So I looked at the market yeah. and thought, there's, there's really not anyone who's doing anything specifically just for men. Um, I mean, male grooming products were kicking off. So there's a lot of people that had started you know, the male grooming industry is booming, or it was booming, and nobody was really at that point doing anything specifically for men. Mm -hmm. Let's rewind. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go back to the point. So I suppose the point was, what was it that, um, that kind of the initial traction that you saw that was different uh, from competitors and going into this niche that you thought, okay, I have the real opportunity to, to really smash it here? <laughs> I don't really know how to answer that question because I don't really understand the question. How do you mean, sorry? So I suppose what, what I'm trying to get at is what was the initial traction for male grooming that, that, that happened? So, so what, what was the, maybe the first few customers or feedback that you got that was then like, actually, I'm, I'm onto something? You know what? In the very beginning, it was very, very mixed. So mm -hmm. we had some people, male and female, that loved the idea and said, why didn't I think of this? This is genius. Why didn't I think of this? Because, yeah. you know, if you look at in line of what's happening, there's obviously a lot of um, really prominent male figures out there that are becoming kind of, I guess, looked out for their style, how they carry themselves, their mental mm -hmm. health, talking about their well-being in public, all that kind of thing. But then I also had, I'd say, equally amount of people who just really didn't take to the idea at all. And so this is generally speaking, obviously, amongst yeah. you know, the general public, friends, family, um, who were saying, how's that going to work? Like, that just doesn't sound, sound mm -hmm. great. So <laughs> it was a real mixed bag. And that's when I then had to do my own research, I guess, into how is this viable? Is this actually, is there a market for this? Is this going to go anywhere? Is it really going to appeal to anybody? You know, who, who is actually ultimately going to end up using this product? Mm -hmm. And then I suppose, what was naturally the, the next step then? So you had the idea for the app, was it to go straight to development or did you test, but just having a, a website, what was your kind of journey into building the product? So we actually started building the app straight away. Um, so mm -hmm. that that was a mixture of different people's involvement in terms of the UI and the UX um, part of the app, but also doing quite a lot of online research. We started building the website at the same time, just so that it flowed together and all the branding was consistent. Um, but really, ultimately, I just wanted to build something that was super easy to use. You know, when you're building something for men which is really going to require something completely different to if you're mm -hmm. trying to appeal to women they look for very very different things when they're looking to buy something so mm -hmm. I guess a lot of that development early on was done in conjunction with testing a little bit um, with people that we thought could be our end users 
but also doing a lot of research. What was some of the, you mentioned there about like the difference between kind of the approach that you'd have to go to a male audience. What were some of the key differences that you discovered that perhaps you didn't think before the way that users interacted with, with your product? I think the key difference between men and women, from my understanding and the research that I've done, I don't know if I'm, you know, just jumping to conclusions here, but men like to find something that works and it works mm -hmm. and that's it. There's no faffing about, it's just, okay, I get this and this works for me. With women, women generally speaking, like to shop around. They wanna see what the best deal is. They wanna compare things to each other, whether it's price, whether it's usability, whatever it may be. Obviously there's exceptions to both of those, um, but that was the main, main difference that I found in the beginning that really had an impact on how we ended up developing what we were doing and marketing. Is that kind of simplicity and convenience? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And so let, let's keep on going with the journey then. So let's say uh, we're kind of at almost where we're at today. What are your, your core product offerings that, that you're doing now and, and where are you looking to, to expand in the future as well? So right now, because of the current global situation that we're in, we have obviously disabled our services. So up until now, we'd obviously had our app services running. We'd also been doing pop-ups for various companies. So we'd started building up that um, corporate side of our business as well. That has obviously since temporarily shut down. So mm -hmm. last year, end of last year, we started looking at obviously bringing products um, onto like into the brand as well. And one of the things that we launched was through the latest in beauty subscription box. So they were doing a special men's ultimate grooming kit. So they approached quite a few different brands. There's probably about 15 to 20 of us that launched the box, um, mm -hmm. including Kiehl's, David Beckham's brand, House 99 was involved. And so we thought, well, what can we offer that really aligns with who we are? So we ended up designing and producing a three-in-one cleansing bar. So it's plastic-free, it's paraben-free, it's vegan. So it ticks a lot of those boxes because that's, that really aligns with who we are as a brand. And it was very different to what the other brands were offering too, um, which is obviously important if you're doing, if you're doing a subscription, a one-off box together. So that was our first product. And then since then, we started looking at other things. And very, very recently, literally just in the last week or two, we've launched our protein powders. We've launched a green powder and then also supplements. Um, so the key thing with all of those products is that they're all made in the UK. That's something that's really, really important to us. And I think given the time that we're in at the moment with what's going on in the world, you know, shopping locally, and I believe buying things as much as possible that are made in this country is actually really, really important. But if you look through the branding and our messaging, that's been there from the very, very beginning. Um, so, I mean, I myself am plant-based. I've been plant-based for 25 years. So also producing something that I myself, in a very selfish way, would be, you know, is something I would want to use and something that I enjoy using because I've automatically got at least one person there that can test something, try something and think, is this good enough? Is this what, if I want to use it, you know, does it pass that test so that other people would want to use it too? Perfect. And the way you described kind of the expanding into different products as well, it's not only just kind of uh, beauty and massage kind of that services, it's more expanding into kind of health and wellness for men. Is that the way that you see the brand growing is that it's not just one of these services, but what's the kind of longer term vision in terms of the way you think of Mint as a brand? Yeah, I think so for me from the very, very beginning, it, you know, the idea sparked really from a health need that was my own. So me working those long hours, I mean, it sounds really glamorous, you're on a yacht and I was very, very lucky and I loved, I loved my job and I loved the opportunity that I had, but it's, it's really the same as working anywhere, 15, 18 hours a day. It's you face the same challenges and, that, and one of those challenges is looking after yourself um, when you're working such long hours and, and doing what you're doing. So that idea really came from a need to look after myself 
And so from the very beginning, it's always been, for me anyway, to, to produce something that in as many different ways enables other people to do the same thing. That's pretty cool. And I suppose for people listening that are trying to start their own business or you know, create a tech company, create a product company, whatever it might be, what are some of the key things that you've learned along this journey that if you were to start again, that you could give the advice to be able to cut your, your time of learning of like, okay, if, if I'd have done this at the start, I'd have saved two, three, seven months, whatever it might be. I think time is a very funny thing. Um, I don't think there's any mistakes that I've made that I would want to go, okay, right, wish I hadn't done that. Obviously, there are things that I think every business owner goes, yeah, I could have done that differently. But I think that's the only way to learn. I mean, if I'd have just fast forwarded from day one of having an idea to now, I mean, would I have learned the same things along the way? I'm not sure. So I think it's, I think those challenges are a a really good thing. And sometimes like take this situation that we're, we're all in now, for example, you can't predict something like that. You just, I think you have to stay true to, what it is that you want, why you started in the first place, and just make sure that every single decision you make and everything that you're trying to achieve aligns with whatever that is that you want mm-hmm. to do from the very beginning. Um, but definitely, we've had a lot of challenges along the way of, you know, there's so much that goes into running a business, whether it's tech-based or not tech-based. And I think the key thing really is building relationships. So going back to the time thing, I think when you're a sole founder, your time is so valuable because you're trying to do, you know, nine times out of 10, most people are starting a business on their own or they're a very, very small team with limited funds and you're trying to do a lot. Um, But I think those time pressures are really only if you put those time pressures on yourself. So you have to be realistic about what it is that you want. You can't do everything at the same time much as I've tried that it hasn't worked um so yeah and I think building relationships is also a key key thing and you have to realize that really those those relationships are you have to nurture them all the time you have to it's not just about networking and you know how many people can I get on my list and really it's it's that's probably been one of the key things about about this journey for me because I Obviously, when I started this, I was working 18 hours a day on a boat as a chef. And then I was doing this in my lunch break for two hours a day. So yeah. I, had a, I was completely physically in a different place to being where I am now launching this in London. But I was also like hammering my work hours anyway. Um, mm-hmm. And a few months later, I ended up leaving and then coming back back to the UK so I could dedicate my time to it full time. Um, and building those relationships in the very beginning was really important because obviously I hadn't lived in the UK for eight years at that stage. So getting out and meeting people, but genuinely wanting to meet people that I felt not could just help me, but that I could align myself with and my brand with and, you know, have like a, I guess, a mutual, mutually beneficial relationship that would be a long-term one as well where you can help each other out and build things together and especially for someone who hadn't even really been in the country for nearly 10 years that was a a big deal in the beginning too and even now really. Can you talk about a couple examples perhaps of of some of these relationships that you've built and then tips as you said it's not just about the number of people that you have on the list it's about the quality it's about the actual relationship there Um, can you maybe give an example and, and and perhaps some tips about how to maintain and build those relationships when you're first starting off your business? That's a very interesting question. I think, to be honest, I think sometimes, so I I actually am an introvert. I don't really like, I mean, my biggest fear is standing on a big stage, talking to lots of people, but it is, it's a goal I have in my head. One day I've got to get over that. So you know, it's not really natural for me to put myself out there, go and meet people, go to these networking things. I mean, if I'm completely honest, the word networking makes me cringe. So it's not, it's really not a natural skill of mine, like marketing sales, none of that are natural skills of mine, but they're things that 
you really have to learn if you if you really want to push the boundaries and and get to places you you kind of have to acquire those skills somehow and I guess it's it's you know some people are extroverts and that comes naturally to them but it's something that I think depending on who you are as a person and what's what you feel you're comfortable with and what works for you is mm-hmm. the way to tackle that but I think you know you have to be genuine and you have to say you're going to a networking thing for example um I think you have to set your intentions clear from the very beginning that you know you can get so caught up in going to all these seminars all these all these networking events but what are you really going there for what is your intention are you hoping to go there and meet five people that you want to introduce your brand to and then make sure that you keep in touch with those people every month every few weeks so I think it completely depends on who you are as an individual, what your intention is and, you know, what your business is about. Because um, people can do that in different ways. You can network online. Obviously, mm-hmm. online is our only choice at the moment, but it it completely depends on who you are as a person and what your brand is about, really. I think we'll, if there's anything else that you wanted to say, like any advice that you would give, to, to anyone else that's coming up with an idea. Maybe we'll, if you just have 30 seconds now and then we'll just go into a, a couple of quick fire questions and finish things off. Wow, um, just keep going and ask, ask people for help there. You know, there's so many, I think that's one of the things I was scared of in the beginning was asking people for help because like, you know, I'm, I'm nobody who's, who's gonna wanna talk to me and, and whatever. But LinkedIn is a great resource. So that's a really, if you're spending more time on Facebook than LinkedIn, don't do it. You need to be spending more time on LinkedIn. So definitely build up your professional network, talk to people, ask questions. You know, people love giving advice. They want to talk to people. They want to share their own journey. So get out there and ask questions. I'm kind of living proof of this because I do this podcast just so I get an excuse to talk to people (laughs) doing cool stuff. So... (laughs) <laughs> awesome well let's get into a i've got three quick fire questions um so would you do you prefer to uh listen to podcasts or to read books read books nice yeah uh who is the biggest person that's influenced you oh that's a big big question <laughs> I, You've got to be I careful do, on these questions. Yeah, I do not mean this in the most arrogant way. Maybe we might have to do another podcast about this, but I would, I would probably say myself. That's really. And why, why do you say it's the first person that's that said that? Is it just looking back on where you've been before and then seeing the progress? Yeah, I think I've I've had some pretty big challenges in my life. I guess I'd say that have really influenced, had a massive influence on what I'm doing now and why I'm doing it. So. I think, you know, when I think about those things, that that really does help me move forward. Yeah. And then I suppose you said books to the last question. What is the one book that you'd recommend to people listening now? Oh, um, I'm going to grab it. Nice. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting right there, the culture code. So this is all about how to create highly successful groups which um, is all about interacting with other people, working with other people, you know, the whole cliche. It is a bit of a cliche, but I guess it's true. (laughs) Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, And I think especially now we're all reaching out to other people online, each other online. And I think it's a really, Mm -hmm. it's a really, really good way to go. Awesome. I'm going to pick that one up. (laughs) Um, Thank you everyone for listening and tuning in. Um, I know we could have sat here and probably talked for, for an hour and got, it, got into super detail about things, but I think it's just a good excuse. I think, I think you should start a podcast or do, do something because I think you've got so much valuable knowledge and insights that people can learn from. So please do check. Um, should I leave a link to, uh, to your LinkedIn for people to... Uh, yeah, sure. They can up? reach me on LinkedIn. So if they search under my name, D-Mommy, that's D-E-E-M-O-M-I, or you can search under Mint on Demand, Grooming and Wellbeing to find us. Perfect. I'll leave all the links below possible. But Dee, thank you so much for coming on. You're I'm welcome. I'm sorry about the audio issues. It's been a bit of a throwing it all together, but we've got to do it whilst we're remote. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been really good. I think we met, what, two years ago and we've kind of talked about it several times about having yeah. this chat. So thanks for the time. Finally got it done. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Right. We'll cut it off here.